I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we all know that 2020 was an incredibly busy year for our national parks. And 2021 is shaping up to be no different. So in this video, we're gonna share with you some special places to go to, some National Park Service sites that give you that big national park feel without the big national park crowds. Before we begin though, full disclosure, we are not guaranteeing you will not see people at these parks. <laughs> you will see people at these parks, but the whole point of this list is to hopefully get you to that big national park feel without having to go to places like Yellowstone, Yosemite, or the Grand Canyon in order for that to happen. And these are all places that we've been to. Certainly there are others out there that will help you get away from the crowds, but this is a list of places that we like and we think that you're gonna enjoy too. North Dakota has discovered that most Americans with a plan to visit all 50 states end up in the Peace Garden State last, so much so that they encourage it by inviting people who visit North Dakota last to the Best for Last Club. If you stop by the Fargo Visitor Center, you get a free t-shirt. But Theodore Roosevelt National Park near Medora is the most visited destination in North Dakota, but it's still rarely crowded, especially if you make the trek to the more remote North Unit. Here you'll find the same windswept vistas and epic sunsets that a lot of Western National Parks boast, and it's an excellent place to find bison and wild horses. When Theodore Roosevelt's wife and mother died on the same day, the day of his daughter's birth, Teddy came to this place to rehabilitate his spirit. It'll do the same for you. And I think we can safely say it did the same for us. This was the first national park that we visited right after Jason had had his brain surgery and he was cleared to start traveling. So we immediately headed for a national park and it did, it 100% just rejuvenated us. National monuments often get overlooked just due to the lack of the national park moniker. But many of our country's national monuments rival our best national parks in every category, whether it be size, wildlife, scenery, or recreation. Dinosaur National Monument on the border of Northern Utah and Colorado is a perfect example. It is a mountainous landscape known for its dinosaur bones, of course, but it's also home to cavernous canyons, petroglyphs, dramatic trails, and world-class whitewater rafting along the Green and Yampa Rivers. We absolutely love Dinosaur National Park. We loved looking for the dinosaur bones, especially in the indoor places because it was very hot, but we were blown away by how big this park was. It's beautiful. Next. Lots of national parks get overlooked because they're named after one feature, Joshua Tree, for example, or Gateway Arch. Most of our cave-related parks especially have so much more to offer. Wind Cave National Park is an excellent place to visit the Black Hills of South Dakota without all the hustle and bustle of Custer State Park or Mount Rushmore. It's home to excellent trails, meadows full of elk, and it's one of the best places to see bison without having to deal with the Yellowstone traffic jams. There are several dirt park service roads that'll help you find more removed areas of the park, and it even has its own gateway community, the town of Hot Springs, South Dakota. Hot Springs won't be full of tourists blocking the sidewalks, but it still offers lodging, dining, coffee shops, and attractions. It is one of my favorite coffee shops in all of the country <laughs> so far. You can find it in Hot Springs. And you know, when we were in Wind Cave, one of the coolest things that happened to us was just coming out of that cave tour and we were heading back. And this is when we had the bus, we were heading back to the campsite. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there were just bison everywhere. And it was so unexpected. And all five of us just stopped. And it's still a great hopping off point to visit all those other Black Hills destinations. Absolutely. That was one of our favorite sort of treks along through National Parks, Badlands, Wind Cave, into Custer. That is an absolutely fantastic vacation. Voyagers National Park is a trek to get to. Trust us, it's on the Canadian-Minnesota border. It's a maze of interconnected waterways that you really need to get on a boat to see. The park operates tour boats that take you out to several islands or you can rent your own. Several commercial campgrounds surrounding the park have canoes to rent and you can even camp on one of the many islands if you're of the tenting variety. 
or you want to rent a houseboat. <laughs> when you're not out on the water, there's quite a bit of shoreline trail. It's one of the best places in America to see moose, nesting bald eagle pairs, and even the occasional northern lights. We didn't get to see the northern lights. We but, did not. Uh, it's just... It's a place all to its own. It's amazing. It's like visiting the Boundary Waters canoe area without having to do it on a canoe. And I love their park video. I hope they're still <laughs> doing the same park video. It's been about three years since we've been there, but the song that is featured in that park video is so good. It's a good one. <laughs> Mesa Verde National Park is known for its incredible early indigenous cliff dwellings, hundreds of them. It was a veritable city at one point. But even if you're not into cliff dwellings, this park has some dramatic vistas to please any park lover. We highly recommend the Petroglyph Trail, which will have you squeezing through some stone hallways and scrambling up rocks along a magnificent canyon. Do you remember how the ranger told us that that was an easy trail? <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went out on this trail with the boys, and it's an awesome trail. Please do it. But when they say moderate, they really do mean moderate getting closer to the hard. <laughs> and just know that if you have people who are averse to climbing, then this may not be the trail. But it has gone down as probably one of our family's favorite trails of all time. Speaking of cliff dwellings, in a remote New Mexico forest, you can find the Gila Cliff Dwellings, the least visited park service site on our list. The Gila Cliff Dwellings is really just a few hours visit, but it's surrounded by nearly a thousand square miles of the Gila National Forest, which offers mountain lakes, scenic drives, deep canyons, and sprawling meadows. One of my favorite things about Gila, something that will stick with me for the rest of my life probably, is walking into the cliff dwellings and having the ranger point out the corn husk or the corn cob that was over 800 years old and had just been left where the indigenous people had put it when they abandoned the cliff dwellings. And that was so powerful just to see this connection between something that I have in my own diet and something someone else was eating yeah. 800 years ago in that very spot. Gila is an incredibly, incredibly special place, and I always try to recommend it whenever we can. It's a bit of a drive to get to from Silver mm -hmm. City, New Mexico, which is a cool town on its own. But like we said, there's a lot to do in the whole national forest. It's not just about that individual Park Service site. No, Gila is truly special. The Guadalupe Mountains are like no other, an ancient uplifted seabed still being revealed by erosion. Guadalupe National Park is a hiker's paradise in the far western corner of Texas, so much so that it's actually easier access through New Mexico. The valleys within are filled with hidden treasures, including a surprising deciduous forest that doesn't feel like it belongs within a thousand miles of where it is. It is the only park where we have actually turned around on a trail. Yeah. It truly is a hiker's paradise. And so even not finishing a trail is still just such an experience. But it was one of those situations where we had gotten out onto the trail and we were so enthralled by everything that we just weren't moving fast enough. And night was starting to descend and we didn't feel like hiking back in the dark with no headlamps and three kids was a good idea. And it, there's very little driving to be done in this mm -hmm. park. It's mostly access through hiking. And you'll find that some of the least visited National Park Service sites are the ones that people have to hike to get to, not surprisingly. Yeah, because, you know, what is that saying? About 100 feet? People don't usually travel more than 100 feet from a road. There it is. In a national park. Guadalupe's sister park, Carlsbad Caverns, is home to one of the greatest accessible caves on earth with dozens of rooms the size of cathedrals. It's popular to go underground to be sure, but virtually nobody takes advantage of this park's trails or rugged scenic drive overlooking Rattlesnake Canyon. The drive into the park is wonderful as well with scenic overlooks dotting the waysides that rarely get a visitor. We were so surprised by 
Carlsbad Caverns. Yes. It is a very similar landscape to Guadalupe Mountains. Mm -hmm. so they're only about an hour away from each other, if that. So you can visit the, but them both in the same day, or you can go and make it a journey and visit both of those as a, as a single destination on a larger trip. Absolutely. Well, that's our roundup of less visited national parks that offer the big park experience. Let us know your favorite less visited parks in the comments below. Yes, please do. And don't forget to like this video if you got something out of it and subscribe to the channel. If you also want to get more America's National Parks stories, we hope you'll join us over on the America's National Parks podcast. You can find it on any podcast app like Apple or Spotify, Amazon, or the 57 million other podcast apps that are out there. All right, that's it for this video. We'll see you on the next one.